I'm Eric Barnes with The Daily Memphian, and welcome to The Sidebar, a weekly show on the community, arts, culture, and more. Today, we're talking to music producer and musician I Make Mad Beats and restaurant owner Kelly English about Le Bon Appetit, especially the late night part that's happening this year. And before we get started, a special thanks to our sponsor, Trezvent Manor. Um, thanks to both of y'all. Thanks for being here. Yeah, it's an honor. Great uh, to be here. Uh, you, I make Mad Beats. We met kind of, sort of, because yeah. I introduced you at TEDx yeah. before COVID. So it was a long time ago. You gave this very cool talk there. And, and then I, I haven't seen you in a while, so it's great. To, yeah. to, to, and we'll talk more about what you're doing. And Kelly, uh, people know you from probably more sound bites and the food stuff. But what is, let me start with you and then sure. talk about everybody's part in this. This Saturday night, what, June 8 from 6 to 9 is Le Bon Appetit, and then from 9 to 11 is a new late night part to it. But right. talk about the history of this, how it came about, and what people can expect. Sure. So this all benefits Le bon or Children's Hospital, which is a place that um, I think is responsible for um, ensuring the future of our region, not just our community, but our region. And, um, you know, I was a kid that needed Le Bonner. Uh, when I was six years old, I fell out of my grandmother's second story window and I broke really the left side of my body. I shattered my arm, broke my femur in two places, ended up, uh, in a hospital meant for adults for three months and then in a body cast for six after that. And, um, I got fine care, but the first time I went to Le Bonner, it, 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 it was an emotional experience for me to see all the things that they do that not just treat children for what they see is wrong at wrong with quotes yeah. uh, with them at, at the moment, but make sure that those families get the treatment. So when I, when I was in there, I was like, you know, not only did I need this place, but my mom and dad really needed this place too. Um, and to see the work that they do, not just when the patient is there, but afterwards to keep the families, um, give them what they need and make sure that um, we're not just, uh, treating people for what we see wrong with them for the minute that we're 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 um, seeking out the symptoms that lead to some of the things they see and and um, you know they're doing amazing work with with uh, with gun violence with children and and um, just a lot of things that really need to happen and uh, it's hard to find someone that uh, that that doesn't have a Lebanon story. The cool thing to me is is when you run into someone, and I don't care if it's the CEO of the hospital or someone that's worked there forever, when you hear someone tell their Le Bonner story, everybody stops and listens. And I don't care if you've heard it before or not. Um, it's just a very inspiring place. Yeah, I, I was both fortunate and unfortunate to have my kids there in various forms, nothing t- too terrible, um, but they're amazing. I mean, it's just, it's a truly amazing place. Yeah. Um, so but I make no beats. How, how did you get involved with this? Yeah. And, um, how did you get involved? Well, uh, you know, I've always said that if, uh, maybe not always, but recently I've been known to say, if Unapologetic had a cooking division, Kelly English would be a uh, cooking <laughs> squad. Uh, I just became a, a really big fan of Kelly, uh, probably at the start of the pandemic. Um, mostly because I'm a character kind of guy. Like, I really love when I see people who have a certain level of integrity and, and depth to their character. I just started following him, man, and realized how much we had in common, and we became friends. And, uh, you know, he introduced us to this idea, to this whole event and the reason for it. Um, and if I'm being all the way live, like, I didn't even need to know the purpose of the event. If Kelly had asked me to do it, I would probably would have said yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but once I got the tour and once I talked to the people there, once I saw the space and saw the clear intention on how it comprehensively uh, takes care of kids and young adults, uh, I was moved. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I understood why Kelly was moved to, uh, to make this a priority in his life. One of the, the I use this story way too much, but it's just such a great story about Le Bonner is there, there, um, it was pre pandemic and we had on the other show on behind the headlines on WKNO, uh, one of the, the top doctors there. And actually we, I'd seen him speak at, um, uh, some kind of Le Bonner Methodist thing and kept pointing at Kelly. Cause it's really good when you point on a podcast, it really helps everyone. <laughs> Ke- I'd seen Kelly there and the guy, he gave the presentation on asthma and kids yeah. with asthma and they'd made all this headway in treating asthma and the medications and all this stuff and yet again and again and again kids would 
come back. X months later, asthma's back just as severe. So they finally sort of think through, like, how do, what's going on? Well, they begin to work with people in their homes. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's really tragic. I mean, the amount of mold that they would find in the home and the conditions and environment. And the, here's this doctor saying, I can give them medicine all day long. I can give them oxygen. We can do all this amazing stuff in the hospital. But if we don't make changes in their lives, right. they're just going to keep coming back. And yeah. I, that kind of like philosophy to me is just really profound, especially when we're talking about kids and young adults. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll take it a step further. Um, I think that there's that awareness, right? But it's just the, uh, maybe the responsibility to actually do something about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't think that, or I'll, I'll say this, I don't think that it's uh, unknown the conditions that a lot of us are growing up in in Memphis. I mean, you can just drive past buildings and just guess what's going on in the walls and in the pipes, you know. Uh, but to actually say, OK, you know, my responsibility isn't just what happens over here. It's it should be, you know, the kids and where they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, we're here with uh, I make Mad Beats and Kelly English um, talking about the Le Bon Appetit uh, uh, gathering fundraiser. We'll talk a little bit more of the logistics of that. It's June 8th, uh, coming up this Saturday from 6 to 9, and then a late night part from 9 to 11. People can search for Le Bon Appetit. They'll find the, find and be able to get tickets. Um, let's talk about the food. It, it started more, I mean, you, Kelly, as food. A bit. Now there's this new component, but let's just go through the food thing. A bunch of local chefs, a bunch of out-of-town chefs kind of give the quick picture of what's going on. And it's at the Kent, I should have said. Yeah. People see that when they... So, uh, yeah, this has always been an event about food. Um, And food is just an easy way, I think, to attract people to a party um, and um, to make it easy for people to support causes. I think that um, there's a there's a few different sectors of uh, of of people that constantly get asked to do things for fundraising. And usually uh, what's well, one of the things that sets this event apart, uh, usually you know, when it's, when it's an event, the, the space is paid for, the security is paid for, and then everybody asks the restaurants and the artists to come for free. That is not what this event does. This event pays the costs of, uh, of the, the chefs and the, the ingredients they use. We're, you know, we're not taking advantage of people. Um, we make sure that the people that, um, that Matt is bringing, their time is taken care of. And, um, you know, there is a there is a, a definite thought that we want to make sure that this event endures and that people want to be a part of it and that we're respectful of of the things that, that people do while we're raising a bunch of money for kids that need help. Yeah. The late night part. Um, and you mentioned unapologetic. Let's yeah. see. Uh, it's not just you, I make yeah. man beats, but it's apologetic. Talk about what apo- unapologetic is, excuse me. Sure. And, and then how its role in this late night part of the event. Unapologetic, uh, in short, is a whole bunch of friends of mine. No, but it really, <laughs> it really is a uh, storytelling label and a creative agency. Uh, I run a studio in Midtown called Outer Space. And, uh, you know, we make a lot of music. We make films. We... We do all of those things for other companies, other organizations. Um, yeah, we're just a bunch of creative people who do a whole bunch of creative things unapologetically, boldly and daringly. And, uh, you know, this is a cause that, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, rehearsal last night was amazing. <laughs> it's going to be a spectacular show, Kelly, if you don't know. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's going to be fun. And are you all going to be doing entertainment music during the first part and the second part or really focused on the late night? Just the late night part. Just the late From night part. 11, yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's new. Yeah. So one of the things that we really wanted to do this year, so Matt and I both uh, were part of Paul Young's arts and culture um, transition team where we really got to talk about what the future of Memphis could look like in the sectors that we work in. And one of the things we kept coming back to was how collaborative the future needs to be and how respectful of, of what we, we do, both self-respect and respecting the things that, that other people do. And this event totally, to me, encapsulates all the conversations that that a much larger group of people too um, that that were in that that transition team that um, that packs all kinds of different disciplines of of art into one place and um, truly represents all of Memphis. I think that 
that this year there's been a big focus on making sure, you know, we've always been really proud of the diversity that we bring in chefs to our events. And I think that this year we've really taken a hard look at what is, what is a, a quote Memphis event? What, what would that look like? Um, and these are, these are the beginning blocks and the obvious places that we think that we can build from. Yeah. Yeah. And again, back to unapologetic, and I, I make mad beats. And I don't know if you want to give everything away or you're yeah. keeping some secrets for the, the late night part. And people can go to one or both, right? They, you can, if you buy the ticket, the, the, the full ticket, you stay for the late night. Or we, we really wanted to be able to be accessible to more people. We understand that that ticket is not a cheap ticket. Uh, so the, the late night portion will have uh, on the unapologetic show. Francis Barry Moreno will be doing some live art. And we have mixologists from Cameo, Inkwell, and the Swamp Bar. We have food from Kenfolk, Cameo, and a few other places. So it is, it is a place where if you want to you wanna come, you want to see something, you don't want to spend $300 to come, there's an option for you. Yeah. But if you do get that full ticket, you can stay for yeah. late night. Yeah. And so somehow, I think, unapologetic, this is not just maybe somebody playing a record or, you know, this, some oh, no. speakers. I have a feeling there's a bunch more to this. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll go ahead and shout out who's performing. Um, you know, we have a lot of, you know, we're, we're pretty well known for, you know, some, maybe some of our uh, original artists like Cameron Bethany, Pro, off them. But I think this time around, we're going to introduce uh, a kind of new cast, a new era of what's happening at the with Unapologetic. And that's going to start with uh, artists like Elo, uh, Nubia Yassin, uh, Unique. And we got a few guests in there, such as uh, Journey, uh, Chris, an amazing violinist, and Etta Havoc, this jazz fusion band that I'm a huge fan of. Um, yeah, and then we got Kid Maestro on the buttons. And uh, yeah, it'll be an interesting night. We're, we're performing in front of artwork created by kids who were once patients at the bar. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I think the beauty of this, um, the young woman's name in one of the interviews, I can't remember her name, uh, but she said that when she's not sure what to do next, she either draws or eats because both of those help her figure things out. Right. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, man, well, if y'all taking advice from her, y'all should come to the Bon Appetit. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be doing art and eating. It's going to be crazy. You should be there. Yeah. Um, well, we'll talk more to both Kelly and uh, I make mad beats here a second. Let me do a little bit of housekeeping here. But let me take a moment to remind everyone this is the sidebar. I'm Eric Barnes. The sidebar airs on WYXR 91.7. Every Thursday at 1130, focused on the community, arts, culture, everything in between. It's not just a radio show, though. It's one of many weekly podcasts we do at the Daily Memphian, including, including sound bites, uh, which will uh, feature Jennifer Chandler, our new food writer um, at the Daily Memphian, who'll be a part, a big part of uh, sound bites going forward. Holly Whitfield will be hosting, and Chris Harrington will still be participating from time to time in sound bites as we've um, kind of transitioned with everything going on there. Uh, Silent bites airs on WYXR every Thursday at 11. And you can get it, again, wherever you get any of your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify. Um, you can also get it on the Daily Memphian site. We also have the Grizzlies podcast hosted by Chris Harrington and Drew Hill. Um, you can get those on the Daily Memphian site or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, a couple more things. Uh, you do go to WYXR.org or download the WYXR app. You can get all these shows. You can get all the talk shows. You can actually get archives of all the music shows um, on the app or at the website. It's a great way to keep up with WYXR. Also consider supporting WYXR. It's nonprofit, listener-supported radio. Become a member, give a donation. You can learn all about that on WYXR. Um, also, the Daily Memphian. Um, we are also a nonprofit, uh, the largest newsroom in the area, focused on Memphis and the Memphis area. Um, if you're not a paid subscriber, consider becoming one or give a donation. Um, we rely on s subscriptions and donations, advertising sponsorships to, to do what we do. Um, on the sidebar, we recently had Matt Ross Spang, the producer of um, Southern Grooves Studio, talking about a lot of different work he has done. We also recently had um, the folks from Opera Memph Memphis on talking about a recent production, but also just opera and opera in Memphis and all that was very interesting. Jacques Osmo is coming up, uh, I think, next week, and Rose Smith 
from the Brooks will be coming up in a couple weeks. I should also mention behind the headlines, which we do, I guess I mentioned earlier, that we do with WKNO. Uh, we recently had District Attorney Steve Mulroy on the show and coming up soon, the new Memphis Shelby County School Superintendent Marie Fagans, as well as a show with uh, a number of the superintendents from some of the suburban school districts. So that's coming up in the next few weeks on WKNO. But we are here with uh, Kelly English and I Make Mad Beats. Let's go to you. I don't know you well enough to call you mad like Kelly does. So oh, Kelly good. can call you mad. So I'm going to say, so I mean, mad beats. Yeah. You, the kind of music you do, again, for people who aren't familiar with you, um, how do you describe it? Cinematic. I describe it as adventurous music. Uh, I'm an explorer. In fact, I used to be called chief. I used to call myself CEO of Unapologetic. Now I'm chief adventurer and explorer. That's yeah. my job is to go out into the world and come back. And, and bring stuff to people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I love, right now, I'm very much in a scoring vibe. I've, I've scored a few award-winning films in the last few years um, and have been involved in a few scores that were award-winning. Um, but I mean, yeah, I, I still create my own albums. I still produce for our artists. Uh, our artists, the wide range of artists from indie folk to, uh, I don't even know, to to rap, to jazz fusion, uh, you know, we do a lot of stuff. And, uh, and I, I tend to find my hands involved in, in some aspect of all of it. So yeah, yeah we do everything. And uh, how long has Unapologetic been around? Since 2015, uh, okay. August 15th, 2015. Okay. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's an organization that spent the majority of its existence in my house, uh, two spare bedrooms, uh, we turned into studios, myself and my then assistant, Kid Maestro, who's now president of the company. Uh, we, we just started working with a lot of artists right out of my house. And a couple of years ago, we ended up moving to Midtown. And now we have a studio there called Outer Space. Uh, and the, the music that I've listened to of yours, which is by no means that I listened to it comprehensively. It really, I'm not just saying this. It, one, it's really cool. This, my, this is my really limited book. I love music and I don't know how to talk about music and I certainly can't play music. This is my quandary in life. But it's also so reflective of Memphis. And I mean, you gave a sense of that as you talked about um, what it is. It does really, as somebody, this is my adopted home, but 27, 28 years, it just captures the kind of, um, the range of and, and complexity of what's going on in the city. And it, it's, it, it varies as you listen. If you go through a playlist, you're, you're listening to all these different things that you might hear on the street as people yeah. drive by with the car windows open, or you <laughs> might experience in a club, or you, you know, a, a, I don't go to a lot of clubs anymore, but you might experience, I, Natalie Van Gundy laughing hysterically. What I meant to say is not club, I meant to say like in a bar, sure. you know, in the, yeah. the best of, of, of bars in town or something like that, where you, this range of music that you hear that is very Memphis to be so complicated and so diverse, and diverse in the widest definition of that. That is, you know, that's a, that's a huge compliment for me slash us because, you know, one of our key tenets is really to show how, uh, how diverse Memphis is in thought, right? And yeah. so one of my, you know, I'm, I'll just say this, like, uh, I have definitely been either uh, put in a box for the kind of music, somebody like me, where I'm from, should or is expected to make and uh and i love you know getting rid of those ideas and showing like no like people like me from where i'm from who went through what i went through we do it all yeah. you know and there are many colors to memphis yeah yeah it, yeah it, no, that, that, that's a great way to say it i won't try to repeat you know you know what something. i think is really to me interesting is uh that both of us like see a box and I don't want to go anywhere near it. And that's led to some successes and has led to some failures for us. Yeah. Um, you know, we've definitely opened and closed some restaurants. Um, but one of the things that I really appreciate about mad that I feel myself in too, is that we're both in a place where we have our own thing we do and we're, we're both, artist or, or craftsman, however you want to put it. Um, but we both understand that for our teams, as far as uh, promotion or as far as um, recognition, like we have a job that we have to do that we got to put ourselves in front of something to, but we are trying to 
be that pulling guard or that running fullback to blaze the way for the people on our team. And I think we're both in a place where, um, you know, we feel the, the, the gravity of what we need to do for other people on our teams at the same time. Um, every time Mad makes a tweet, I'm, like, I'll find myself being like, yeah, that's me, yeah. like every <laughs> single time. Right. And, um, you know, he puts into words some ways that I feel that I, I fail to be able to express sometimes until I, I see, and it makes me feel really good to see, like, my friend feels a lot of the same things that I feel. Yeah. You, you, what was your first restaurant? Iris. It was Iris? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, your best known Iris, Second Line, Thino's that you, you took over a while before yep. COVID, right? Yep. Right before. And then we had Ponta for yeah. a bit. And yeah. then now we have Swamp Bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where, I can't remember where you're from. New Orleans. You are from New Orleans. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, one of the last shows we did before COVID, one of the last podcasts was you, I think. It was right I was when a it mess. started. I was and a mess. You were a mess. Yeah. And you were the one, I've said this story before, but one of the last places I went out to without a mask and pretending things were normal was weeks before, if not days before the shutdowns started in March-ish of, of 2020. And I remember seeing you at Second Line, and I'm sitting there working, just, this isn't happening, not happening. I'm in complete denial that this is going to be bad. I just, because the only way I can think about it. And you said, oh, you, you will not believe how bad this is going to be for small businesses and restaurants. I can't remember what you said, but you basically called it in terms of the percentage of restaurants that would close, how many would come back, and it was that bad. I was thinking, for some reason, something on the news triggered me today, and I was thinking how that's four plus years ago. But how is your business, and I'm going to have the same question for, for I Make Mad Beats, like how have things changed for you? Your restaurants are back, Ponta didn't make it, but you got Swamp Bar. I mean, that's, that could have happened. I mean, it's a really hard business that you chose yep. to be in. But how have things changed COVID-wise still? You know, um, I, think that, I think that things have, things have gotten better for the employees of restaurants. Um, you can call out if you're sick. The, the weird thing, <laughs> and not lose your job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. Um, the the weird thing is that during COVID, there was, and maybe I was just hypersensitive to my section of the world, but there was a big push for restaurants to be uh, more flexible with schedules, equitable with time, and everybody was on board with that. Like that was a big talking point, and everyone is on board with that until their cheeseburger is late, and then they don't care. They don't care. Um, my life has been a little bit different. I will tell you that there are definitely times and I'm, I'm ignoring the health crisis the world went through. I, I've lost people that were close to me. Sure, I've had sure. people close to me lose people that were very close to them. Yeah. Um, but there are moments that, that when I look back on the pandemic, it was the most free I ever felt. And, and there, there are a few reasons for that. I feel like we could get outside the box, but mostly... I feel like I had permission to fail and I have never felt that before. And I don't feel that now. Yeah. Um, but whether we were talking about somebody not liking something they ate or the entire organization I have come crashing down, I felt like I had permission to do it. And I feel like that's part of the reason that we got to come through it successfully. Cause I got to get a little bit reckless yeah. Yeah. and, um, forget the norm. For you, I mean, as a performer, you, you at least for the, in the height or the darkness of COVID, you couldn't perform in people, probably hard to collaborate with people. And you are obviously a very collaborative guy. How was that? And then where, what, what's kind of lingered or changed four years removed? Yeah. To, you know, to be, uh, to be as detailed and honest as possible, I was kind of dealing with two major crises. So we had COVID, of course. And and as a family, we had to shut everything down. I told you we were running everything out of my house. We had to stop having people over to my house, stop collaborating, stop having sessions, stop producing music, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then I, I also went through the onset of uh, a rare autoimmune disorder. So, oh, wow. yeah, I haven't felt the left side of my face in about four years. And I deal with pain and fatigue pretty often. Uh, and so it, there was a lot of adaptation, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, but, you know, as you stated, you know, our bread and butter at, at Unapologetic, it, I mean, it, it is making music, but what it, what it really was, was performing music. It was making the music to perform. It was, it was making the music 
as an asset, a part of an experience, right? Um, literally two days, uh, two days before uh, everything shut down, or two days after everything shut down, we were supposed to do a show here at the theater ah, with Mono yeah. Neon, and that was going to set off a tour that we had planned. Right. And we were we had partnered with <clears throat> with Red Bull, off them, and a whole bunch of other artists were supposed to. And some of our artists, was specifically off them, like off them quit his job to go on tour, right? Uh, and so, you know, we were super banking on 2020 being the thing yeah. that took us to the next level. You know, not only could we not perform, we couldn't have clients, we couldn't have studio clients, uh, you know. And so I spent 2020 really just learning how to, like, not be mad at myself for not being who I was in 2019 anymore. Because I, I, I lost some capabilities and I couldn't operate the same. And then once we got past that, then we began to adapt. And yeah, a lot of things still linger because people get older, people have to adapt. People who didn't have jobs had to get jobs. Everything costs more. So even though you got a job making more money than you ever had, it still feels like you didn't get right. a job making a whole bunch of money. Right, right. And, you know, and, and every, the stakes are higher now. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're pretty much out of time. Uh, let me remind everyone that uh, Le Bon Appetit uh, is this Saturday, June 8th from 6 to 9 is the, the main part that people may be familiar with. And from 9 to 11 is the late night. People can go to one or the other or both. Um, they can get tickets. Just uh, search for Le Bon Appetit. Um, and a question I always ask everybody, I try to ask them to do you first. What was the first concert you went to? Tone Loke and Millie Vanilli. Nice. <laughs> in fact, in New Orleans. In New Orleans. And I didn't know that Millie Vanilli was lip syncing. I couldn't tell. Wow. <laughs> you didn't know. You didn't know. <laughs> Professional <laughs> lip syncing. What, uh, what was it? The arena? A claw? Like where, it was where? at the UNO Lakefront Arena in New Orleans. You uh, yeah, I was, I was 12. You were 12. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. For, this is always good with people who are in the music industry, musicians. Yeah. What was your first concert you went to? It was Boys to Men. At the pyramid. Nice. Yeah. That's very good. We've had, I think we've had a boys to men. I feel yeah. like we've had a boys to men over the years that I've asked people. So, yeah. Very good. Well, thank you. I make mad beats. Uh, Kelly English, again, if you can go to the event this weekend, Saturday, June 8th, 6 to 9, and 9 to 11. Uh, you can learn more about these uh, folks on, on Instagram, Twitter, wherever you go. Lebonapetit.org. Um, Le, Le bon, okay, there we go. Lebonapetit.org. Good if I'd known that from the start, and that's on me. Uh, but that's all the time we have this week. Uh, I'm Eric Barnes. If you missed any of the episodes, Go to WYXR, go to Daily Memphian, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.